If you've been recently diagnosed with dementia or someone close to you has, you could easily be feeling overwhelmed by it. Many people do. You'll want to know what to expect, what to do and how to get the support you need. That's why we've created this presentation to help you begin to understand that you and your loved ones are not on your own and that there is support, that others have been there before you and are ready to share what they've learned. They're people from different backgrounds, different ages and different stages of dementia. But the one consistent piece of advice they all offer is seek support early. By allowing them to pass this on, and the other vital information they so generously share here, you truly are taking the first step to living positively with dementia. When I first met Gary, uh, he was uh, caring for his mother who had uh, early onset a dementia diagnosis. So she was 50. It was probably within a couple of years that a test became available uh, because of the very strong family history. And Gary had always wanted to find out whether he had uh, the dementia or not. So he went along and had the testing. Well, mum started to become quite concerned in her relationship with dad and he was, you know, quite withdrawn but at the same time a little bit angry. He was being a little bit irrational and his character was out of sorts. I'm going to give you a big kiss later. Well I knew it had to be something because he, he was doing strange things and being a, a little bit abusive where he never used to be. I'll make a cup of tea. And telling me that I'm not cooking the right way and things like that. Um, too bad, yeah. Over that nine years after finding out that there was a positive result and that Gary um, was going to get uh, dementia uh, early in life as well, um, he has been tested every year. Um, he's had uh, neuropsychological testing every year just to track whether there were any changes and so on. And the first changes started probably about two and a half years ago and just before Christmas last year which was only seven months ago um, that an official diagnosis of dementia was made. All up it took a couple of years um, to finally get the diagnosis through seeing a few specialists that um, he did have dementia. I decided to make an arrangement with the doctor and I made arrangements with the doctor and that was the start of when he sent, decided to send him to a, uh, a specialist. And that was when we found out that that's what it was. And he'd taken CT scans and things like that. And it was, that's what he said, it, what was diagnosed as dementia. We knew that there were huge changes ahead um, ahead of us and uh, we really needed to find, go and find out more about what the disease entailed. One of the things that we did fairly early on was to contact um, Alzheimer's Australia uh, because we were struggling with some things then when we were having a bit of a hard time coming to terms with um, some of the impacts of this illness. So Mainly because we were just the two of us yeah. and we needed someone to talk to. Yeah, so and, we did. We, we found did someone that, to yeah. talk to. Which was good. Yeah. Dementia is a decline in brain or cognitive function that causes people to lose memory uh, and sometimes other functions such as our judgment, our reasoning, our insight. It may also affect our ability to draw, to do complicated uh, movements. So dementia is a progressive decline in brain or cognitive functions. It's very common to have people ask, what is the difference between Alzheimer's disease and dementia? Dementia has many causes. One of them, in fact the most common, is Alzheimer's disease. 
But there are other causes of dementia. It can be caused by a degeneration at the front of the brain. It can be caused by a condition we call Lewy body disease. It can be caused by multiple strokes. And indeed, there are uh, several hundred possible causes of dementia. But the most common is Alzheimer's disease, so often the terms are used interchangeably. To diagnose dementia, we need a specialist involved in most cases, and uh, the specialist will not only diagnose dementia, but the sort of dementia, such as Alzheimer's disease or one of the other causes. And yes, we certainly then need ongoing involvement of a professional team to support the person, to support the people that are around the person who has this diagnosis. In any phone book, we, we, you know, we found the Alzheimer's Australia telephone number and so on, and, and we contacted them to just sort of see what they offered in terms of support services. Alzheimer's Australia was like a lifeline uh, for us. It um, was able to talk through with us uh, what support uh, was out there, um, especially for those initial stages and the early um, stages of dementia. And, um, you know, we were feeling that, you know, we actually, we really needed the help. One of the, the best things that we've done um, is a living with memory loss group uh, that they run. And the value of that was it put us in contact with um, a whole group of other people who are um, going through the same experience as we are um, and facing the same difficulties and things that we are. So um, we met with that group um, and we've stayed in contact with that group. We learnt many, um, many different things at the workshops. Uh, we learnt um, on, you know, particularly on how to cope with Dad's behavioural issues. Um, you know, we learned. Uh, we, you know, we learned issues on incontinence. Um, you know, problems that um, at the time we weren't there, but you know, um, at least we were aware of. Uh, you know, how to how to ha how to cope in in those circumstances. Practically, you know, we we went and we did our wills and things, and mm. we did sort of power of attorney uh, and sort of legal. You know, all the legal documents and everything. Um, about sort of decision making and everything. So that was one of the practical things that um, Alzheimer's Australia staff thought was important. And looking back, that was actually a very important thing to do, wasn't it? Yeah, um, but well, you don't also, have to worry about it. Yeah, and they also linked us, you know, with other people so that um, we had, you know, other people to, to talk to about this. Even if it's on the phone, you know, we can still talk to people. From the uh, council, I'm allowed 10, 10 hours a month of re what they call respite. So he has a, a, a lady come. So I, two hours a week wasn't an, uh, You can't do anything in two hours. So I made it two lots of five hours. So that that particular day I can meet up with my girlfriends and we can go out and have a day out and he has a day with the, the carer. My mum has been the pillar of strength in all of this and her underlying love for her husband and through that I think we, the rest of the family, um, does gain its strength. There's a couple of people that are really good friends and so I don't just dump everything on Mandy or something so I can talk to other people, which is good. And I think that's, that's also a really tricky part of this, is telling uh, family and friends about it. Um, and I know there have been times along the way when um, it's been necessary to, to let people know more information and so on. And of course that information is quite devastating to them as well. Um, so um, you, you can't sort of save friends and family from that. Uh, either you know you have to have those discussions because it's really important for us to have the support of friends mm. uh, and family members which, which uh, they've been very good yeah they have. they have and they understand what's happening and they haven't 
treated me like I had um, some contagious death threat or something. So they've just been, you know... Very accepting. Yeah. I think if a person has been diagnosed with dementia, it's important for them or those around them to ensure that they are uh, in touch with a support service. Alzheimer's Australia has a range of uh, counselling and other supports that are vital in this early stage of the diagnosis and it's very very important that this be pursued. Uh, there are other services if there's behavioural uh, problems and there sometimes uh, are in uh, people with dementia then there's a uh, advisory service called DBMAS which stands for the Dementia Behaviour Management Advisory Service that's around available around the clock uh, but there are other supports as well. I think also the general practitioner can uh, complete what's called a, uh, a, a mental health care plan that can allow a person with dementia and their family to access counselling uh, and I think that's also a very important part of going through this process. Gary's short term memory is affected um, quite severely at the moment. so. Um, if I ask him to do something, um, if he doesn't do it sort of right there immediately, um, then he hasn't got the ability to hold that task in his mind to do at a later date and so on. So um, it, it actually means that I um, have to check up sometimes and make sure that, you know, if I've asked sort of him to do something that he, ac he actually has sort of followed through and, and done that task and so on. In this um, dementia, everyone's different. They're not a, the same thing. Doesn't go on with each couple, each p a person. We rely very heavily on a diary. We use the calendar. Um, um, I, if, if I need to go out to do something, I usually leave Gary with a bit of a list of jobs to do to keep him occupied and and busy because. Um, you know, just the ability to think of a task to do or, oh, you know, I, I need to, you know, find that item from the shed or whatever, um, that sort of capacity is gone now. So, um, so to prompt Gary with lists and things has, has become sort of an important way of life. Routine is very important. I think having good um, systems and good support um, and you know, really working to um, yeah to a time to a time frame, um, so that you know, dad isn't put out in any way, and um, so he can you know maintain his day to day living. Um, to you know, to to have some socialisation, and you know, he attends daycare, and and that's very important that he is out in the community, and you know, um, you know, he's not staying home and isolated. Where Gary used to pick up the phone and you know contact his friends and and all that sort of stuff, um, he needs prompting to do that um, to keep contact up with people so it's just a matter of saying oh you haven't spoken to you know Dave for a little while you know how about you go and give him a ring and and those sorts of things. I know a, a, a couple of friends of ours uh, they just sort of gave up and didn't associate or anything gave bowls away I was determined I wasn't going to give the bowls away and, you know, people say, oh, you can't bowl anymore. I said, no, as long as he can bowl and he's walking, we'll be bowling. And, and even this year they said, will you still um, bowl this year? I said, yes, as long as I can. And he, he's still bowling very well. This illness has changed um, our lives in terms of being able to earn and, and work and, and all those sorts of things. Um, but we're also balancing that with just trying to live our lives. Um, and you're a really active person, so you want to get out there and you want to mm. have some fun and, and, you know, do... Do it. Yes, things like... Oh, going overseas. Yes. Um, 
doing things that you always wanted to do, sort of. Playing golf. Yeah, trying to play golf. <laughs> we like our activities. Even if we can't half see. <laughs> you know, we've got our eyes done. Yeah, didn't you notice? <laughs> a dementia diagnosis, um, you know, it's, it's a frightening thing, it's a scary thing. And your, you know, your mind can take you to, you know, that, the sadness and, and all that sort of stuff quite easily. Um, but it's at the expense of living in the here and the now. So I think that's probably the most important way to try to, um, to move through this, uh, is, is to not forget um, that, you know, today's a beautiful day. Um, you know, what can we do that is fun and exciting and, you know, to create memories together and all those sorts of things. Whilst the diagnosis of dementia is a serious diagnosis that uh, can't be taken lightly, it doesn't mean that life ends. It, it may be that uh, life is different after that diagnosis is made and there will be new challenges that come as the dementia progresses. But no, we should still make sure that the person with dementia and their family are uh, living as uh, uh, full a life as they possibly can. It certainly helps, for instance, if they tell their friends the diagnosis, but that doesn't mean that they should uh, sever all their links or their community supports. In fact, we know that the more socially engaged and active a person is, the slower the progression of the dementia. Unfortunately, Alzheimer's uh, disease and the other dementias tend to be conditions that are not widely spoken about uh, and they're quite, quite uh, feared in fact. Uh, it's not that dissimilar to the story about cancer 40 or 50 years ago. People didn't talk to their friends about the fact that they had cancer. There wasn't a lot of coverage of cancer in the press and doctors didn't want to talk to their patients about the cancer that they diagnosed. It was very much stigmatised, it was very much in the closet. But now uh, people are quite comfortable to talk about their breast cancer or their prostate cancer. It's demystified, it's no longer stigmatised. I think we need to make the same progress with other chronic conditions, incontinence, uh, uh, we need to do the same also with dementia. Uh, dementia is an increasingly common problem, it's going to affect uh, over a million Australians uh, by about 2050 and uh, we need to be able to freely talk about it so people can express their concerns, their anxieties, but also so that it's no longer a hush-hush condition which seems far worse simply because people aren't talking about it. I would say use um, Alzheimer's Australia. Um, they are a great organisation um, and they have lots and lots of different services which can be of amazing benefit to you um, through, you know, through the, through the journey of, of the progression of this disease. Um, um, don't be scared to ask for help um, from them. Um, engage with them early. Um, they, they're a source of great information. There is help out there that is available um, and that, that needs to be sourced and in order f to make life as pleasurable as possible. L living with dementia is also good and I think as a, str as a family we have bonded you know, incredibly more so as our father has become the centre of our universe and we all work around him. Keep going. That's, a, that's all there is to it, yeah. Yeah. Once you drop your... You've just got to give a lot of, a lot of love and understanding. Yeah. That's what it all boils down to. Yeah. Try and stick to the here and the now as much as you possibly can. Um, and really try and get as much out of, you know, each day, each week. Have uh, family reunions and things like that as much as you can, just to sort of make things normal day living as much as you can. We always had the fondest memories of Dad. He, just his nature and his character, I think, you know, really 
kept things in focus or keep keeps things in focus for us and you know we're not he's not judged now by his dementia he's judged for the the man that you know he is well i'm hoping that they'll find some kind of drug that might slow it down or even stop it so i'm kind of positive to to think like that which doesn't make you feel doom and gloom all the time, so that's always a good thing to think about. If you're feeling a bit gloomy, just there's a lot of people doing a lot of work trying to find something, even if it just slows it down. I mean, that could happen any time. Mm, that's good. So, and be positive. <laughs> I don't know. That's what I'm doing anyway. I can recommend it to <laughs> all those people who are watching. <laughs> We're doing a great deal of uh, research here in my centre at the Austin Hospital and there are many other centres around Australia and the world that are vigorously searching for better treatments for the various forms of dementia. We're not far off, I think, in uh, not far off developing drugs that will certainly slow down the process of dementia and even often offer the opportunity to stop dementia completely. Um, but this, uh, this research effort needs to go on. It's vital, I believe, that people with dementia are aware of the research options, the trials that are in progress, and seriously consider becoming a participant in these trials. It may be that they don't benefit themselves, but the information that we get and hopefully the better treatments that we get will be of benefit to the next generation. In other words, their children and their grandchildren. This is vital. Alzheimer's Australia have a very uh, helpful program called Mind Your Mind. It's about dementia risk reduction. But interestingly, all of the strategies that are covered in the Mind Your Mind program are just as relevant to people who have the diagnosis of dementia already. So activities such as uh, exercise, remaining socially engaged, eating well, avoiding cardiac risk factors, all of these are just as important to the person with dementia as to the person who is trying to prevent dementia. So I would strongly recommend the Mind Your Mind program of Alzheimer's Australia be looked at by people with this diagnosis and that they pursue the strategies that are outlined in that program. We don't stop doing things that are good for our health when the diagnosis of dementia is made. In fact, it's even more important that we act in a way that is good for our overall health, our heart health and our brain health, even with the diagnosis of dementia. At Alzheimer's Australia, we support people dealing with all types of dementia, from all age groups and from all sorts of backgrounds and situations. We also help people who don't have a diagnosis of dementia, but do have concerns about changes to memory or cognition. I'm sure we can help you. Our services include the Living with Memory Loss Program, Memory Lane Cafes, Counselling, Information and Education Programs, and many other initiatives, some of which you would have heard mentioned in this presentation. I hope you found it helpful and I encourage you to take that first very important step towards living positively with dementia. Please pick up the phone and call our National Dementia Helpline on 1800 100 500 or visit our website at alzheimers.org.au. Thank you.